If someone were to tell me they were able to fit a full-size Windows 10 PC into a device no bigger than a modern day smartphone, I'd say they were crazy. That is, until I picked up this device. Hey everyone, it's Andrew from AMD Tech and this is my full review of the GPD Pocket, a 7-inch mini laptop marvel. Now let's get something out of the way. This is way too thick to fit into jeans comfortably without it being noticed, unless you have really baggy pockets. But definitely you can put it into a suit jacket pocket without any issues. At 1.06 pounds, it's certainly not the lightest device, but considering it's running a full Windows 10 OS, I can forgive it. And holding it with two hands is definitely a preferred way of using it. Just to give you an idea of its size, here it is with the Xiaomi Mi Max 2, a 6.44 inch giant smartphone. The GPD Pocket is not that much bigger, yet it's running a full Windows OS. Now one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is its superb build quality. It's made of CNC machined aluminum and it really is top notch. It looks like somebody took a MacBook and shrunk it down to this miniature size. The GPD Pocket comes in at $499. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, if you were lucky enough to get in on the Indiegogo campaign, you got it at a reduced price. But the retail price right now is around $4.99, but you can get it on flash sale, so be on the lookout on my links for further information. Powering this bad boy is the Intel Atom X7 Z8750 Cherry Trail processor. It's got 8GB of DDR3 RAM and 128GB of eMMC storage. And it sports a 7-inch IPS touch display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1200. That's about 323 pixels per inch. And it's covered in Gorilla Glass 3. Now I like the fact that it has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio but I wish it was a little bit brighter. It's a bit on the dim side, but it's a sharp display with very deep racks and very vibrant colors. Very impressed with this display. I'm a little bit surprised on just how good this display really is. Despite its small size, they managed to fit a QWERTY keyboard into this small device. Yes, it's a bit cramped, but at 1.3 millimeters of key travel, that's pretty good. But I wouldn't be typing the next great novel on this, but for quick email here and there, it certainly can get the job done. Obviously, they weren't able to put a full trackpad on this, so they had to go with a track point. It's similar to the ones we find on the ThinkPads. If you like that kind of pointing device, then you'll definitely like this. It worked really well. It was very responsive. Actually, I was a little bit surprised at how well it worked. But most of the time, I found myself using the touchscreen. There are no ports on the left side of the device. They're all located on the right side. And I was pleasantly surprised with the array of ports that you do get. Now you get a USB 3.0. It's Type A. Next to that is your 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And next to that is your micro HDMI port to connect to a TV or monitor. And finally you get your USB Type-C. Now this is not Thunderbolt 3 compatible, but you can do charge and data. Unfortunately I couldn't connect my USB-C monitor to it. And because this is such a compact device, they needed to put a fan in the device and put a cooling vent as you see here. And on the bottom of the device, what I thought was a speaker is actually another cooling vent. And speaking of those fans, here it is with the cover off. As you can see, it's a well-engineered device. I was actually kind of surprised on how well this is put together. And because of its small size, everything is soldered on, so you won't be able to upgrade any of the parts. Now, there is no speaker grill, but the speaker is located somewhere below the keyboard, or it emanates from the keyboard. Let's hear it in action. Now going into this, I didn't have high expectations for the audio quality, and I was right. It's really not that good. It's not great in terms of volume, and it doesn't have any bass, and it, the mids are so-so. So I would say this is exactly what you'd expect on such a small device. Now, of course, you can connect it to Bluetooth headphones or connect regular headphones via the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And because this is such a compact device, certain sacrifices had to be made. That means there's no webcam. And for some that may not be an issue, for others that might be a total issue because they needed to Skype, they needed to have video conference with, so this might be a deal breaker for some. Now, of course you could always connect a USB webcam, which a lot of people would do anyway. 
Now, as far as battery life is concerned, GPD claims you're gonna get about 12 hours on this device. Now, it sports a 7,000 milliampere battery. I didn't get close to the 12 hours. Actually, I got closer to about eight hours, and that's with conservative use. But if you're gonna push it a little bit harder, you're gonna look anywhere from six to eight hours, depending on your usage at hand. The unit I have runs Windows 10 Home, but there is a Ubuntu version that's supposed to be coming out any day now. It has 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Unfortunately, it's not running at its full 1600 megahertz capacity. No doubt to aid in battery life. And it has a 128 gigabyte Samsung eMMC drive, of which about 103 gigabytes are available to the user. Now here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. It did a 142.4 on the read and a 95.68 on the write. These are the kind of scores you'd expect from this class of device. It did a 33.28 on the multi-core score of the Geekbench 4 test. The single core score of 1083 is about on par with what you'd get from a Cherry Trail device. Now it's built-in graphics did 58.45 on the OpenCL. It has Bluetooth 4.1 with no issues in terms of pairing and with range, so it worked pretty well. And it also has dual band wireless AC, and the range was very good, reception was excellent, and I got pretty good speeds. These are about normal for my Cox internet in my house. Now please keep something in mind. This is not a gaming machine per se. It's only running an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor, a low-end processor at best. And that's why you'll see scores like this on the 3D Mark test. But you are able to do some gaming on this. I was able to load Minecraft and it played somewhat okay. But I did have a good time playing some retro games such as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out and Super Mario Kart and the like. For that, you can do some really fun gaming on this. But I wouldn't be doing any video editing or high-end Photoshop work or any processor intensive tasks. But this is perfectly fine to do some emails, web browsing, Netflix, YouTube, and the like. Some pretty much general everyday use. It'll be fine. Now as far as thermals are concerned, this is actually pretty good considering that this is a very compact device. Now under heavy load, it will peak at around 104 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. And under normal usage, the temperature is more around 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. Now it does have a fan and it does kick in when it's under heavy load, so keep that in mind, but it's not overly loud and it really was not too much of a distraction. So at the end of the day, what do I really think about the GPD Pocket? Well, I really do like it, but I do know that this is for a niche audience. I understand that it's really more for enthusiasts and geared towards business users and not towards gamers. So please keep that in mind. But with its nice build quality, its really nice sharp display, and overall pocketability, I think this does fill a niche that some people may want. But for the everyday user, I'd have to say this is probably too expensive at $500. But for $150 or $100 less, I would say this is a definite recommendation. But for me, there's something nostalgic about a type of device that reminds me of the UMPC days that I really do love. And it brings me back to that. And for that, I really do like it. For me, I think the $500 is worth it. But for the normal everyday user, it's probably not worth it. So what do you think about the GPD Pocket? I really do like it. It's a niche device, I understand that. It's expensive at $500, but it just reminds me of the home PCs that I really did love uh, from a few years ago. And I really like the fact that it has that excellent build quality, that CNC machined aluminum is really MacBook-esque in a lot of ways. Really premium in that build quality. The screen surprised me probably the most in the sense that it was really sharp, really a beautiful display, although I wish it was a little bit brighter, it really is excellent nonetheless. Now, its performance, again, this is a Cherry Trail device. I wouldn't expect much out of it as shown by some of those benchmarks, but it's not terrible. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM, not something we normally see on a Cherry Trail Atom device. This really does check a lot of the boxes, especially if you're an enthusiast. I understand it's not for everyday kind of users because of the small screen, it's only seven inches. Now, of course, there are shortcomings in, in terms of this device, the cramped keyboard being one of them. It doesn't have a trackpad, it has a track point, although it did work pretty well. I, I just know this is not for everyone, especially at the $500 price point. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Have you picked one up? Did you order one of the Ubuntu versions? I know that's supposed to be shipping very soon. Let us know if you did in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.